With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. comes a return from a few steps into the end zone and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback It's McNair. Pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. Christian Barmore getting in there to drop him. Didn't have the greatest field position to start, did they? And now, after this sack, it's way, way worse. And right off the bat, first play of the game. So a tough early challenge here, second and long after the sack. A first carry for the legend, it's Bo Jackson. And a very short pick up there across the 15 to the 16. He'll get two yards back, but it's going to leave him with a long third and 13. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. And this opening drive not going to plan. This is now third and 13. Out of the gun, it's McNair. Flushed out right. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Christian Barber. Now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. What a great job getting pressure here on the first drive. Three plays and already two sacks. And that pressure has been intense right from the beginning. And I'm telling you, if they don't make an adjustment in play calling and protection, it'll go from intense to relentless. So still a scoreless game in the first, but they're going to go for this thing on their own side of the field on fourth down. He's going to get that to his running back out of the backfield. And he is out of bounds right around the 34. So not only do they convert on fourth, but they pick up 22 yards in the process. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a whistle, and I think a penalty here for a delay. No, they're going to say timeout. They did get the timeout in time. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. On the ground, this is Derrick Henry. They'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. But you don't turn your nose up at a gain of four, do you? They'll take that on first down. Playbook's got to be pretty well open on second and six. From the 38 now, here's second and six. Now McNair. The throw here right sideline falls incomplete. So many times we've seen him trying to escape the pocket and do something with his legs, but in this case, the pressure was too intense and he made the wise choice to just get rid of the football and make sure no one was going to get it. Here's McNair. He'll dump this to Bo. It's complete. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. A good-looking drive so far for the Panthers and a first down here. Well, we know he can run the football, too, but he's a good pass catcher. That's been on display here, Charles, on this opening drive. And we certainly have seen the benefits of what he did in the offseason, which was spend more time with wide receivers working on routes, working on cuts, in order to make himself a more complete running back and even more of a threat downfield. 
Now McNair off the play fake. And this will go to Henry out wide. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's second down. Yeah, they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape, or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area. But they want him involved, just as you said. They want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game, but they must like the matchups they're getting. Smith catches left side. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. And they just keep marching right along. First down on a pickup of eight there. Off the option, here's Henry. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Ready, no score after one on EA Sports. Panther football to start quarter number two as they've got it with a second down and two coming up. Ready, break. give it's Jackson and he'll be brought down at the 21 just shy of the 20 in the red zone seven yards there and a first down but they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run found his spot and picked up nice yardage didn't he and now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone on first down it's McNair eluding the pressure right it won't be a sack, but it's no gain, and it brings up second down. Ben, I think he's just grateful to get back to the line of scrimmage and avoid not just losing yardage, but a big hit on that play as well. That defense closed on him quick and forced a quick surrender out of bounds. Here we go. Here's second and 10. McNair. And that falls to the ground, incomplete. A nice job of bodying him up defensively. And now it brings up third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. McNair to throw. Throw left side is complete on the diving effort. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. They'll try and run for it with Bo. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. They went with the run pass option, and I don't know if the option really mattered there because the defense was ready. So many times you put the defense at a disadvantage because you have those multiple options. But when they read their keys and play it correctly, sometimes the result goes in their favor. Second quarter action with 159 remaining. Can this Vikings D hold up one more time? Third and goal. To throw McNair. A hit as he throws there incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held him off for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. And no hesitation about this decision here. Confidently, they're going to go for this. Fourth and goal from the three. 60 Bison, 60 Bison. They'll try the ground game with Jackson. And this is going to come up well short as they stop him on fourth down. They stop him on fourth and goal at the three. And on the opening drive of the ball game, the defense comes up with a goal line stand. On the ready. Left thing, 19. On first and 10, it's Jackson. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. 
Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. Jackson throwing over the middle and it's incomplete. Jensen good. He's going to be a very busy guy. Two catches already in this opening drive and they were looking his way for a third. I think they put this defense on notice that that could be a really, really frequent combination. To throw again is Jackson. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. Five yards. Now it's third and five. The Vikings in the hurry up. They're hustling up to the line. On third down, this is Jackson. No gain on the play there. A nice job defensively. And it likely forces a punt situation on fourth. You don't see that a ton, do you? Or the cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field. Sees that the ball's moved to the middle and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it, and that will force a turnover here on go, downs. Cougar 19. Pass the 60. Pass the 60. On first and ten, McNair. Short throw, that's caught by Davis. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great... Oh, he tries to give it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Sauce Gardner picks it up. And the Vikings are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. I think this will run awry very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. Looking long for Thomas. Oh, that is incomplete. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. That's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up. Converged on his man and broke the play up. Second and ten. Here's Jackson again. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the ten back at the nine. Bruce Smith brings the heat, gets the sack. Here now a third and 20. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth, ready for quarter number three. So no scoring in our first half. What will the second half bring as we are now back underway? And he'll take it a yard or so past the 20, call it the 21. Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. And we thought this game had the potential to be tight. Maybe not this tight. Scoreless as we start the third quarter. And I love the way you use the word tight. I'm going to take it a little bit different direction here because it's not just tight on the scoreboard. I think both offenses have been tight in how they've played this game. No one's been loose. No one's been free. They've got to find a way to make some plays. And I don't think you do it if you're really tight in everything that you're doing in the game. Again, it's Jackson as he'll stay on the ground. And he's able to get out to the 32 brought down there. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Get up. 
the 32 now. Here's first and 10. Jackson now. To the right side and complete to Thomas. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Jackson on first down. He'll get this into the hands of Nico Collins. Well, he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. Now it's Jackson. That's into a crowd and intercepted. And the Panthers are going to have it here just past the 25. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going, so what needs to change? And a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. Let's we'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. They run with Jackson out of the gun. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. What an advantage having a lead guy in the middle of the defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. But what they're seeking with an RPO is space for the receiver to make a catch and then make a play downfield, but there wasn't any space available, thus the incompletion. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now McNair. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 43. Running from the gun with Henry. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. I'd say they've got to find a way to get him going. He's such a big okay, part of their offense. I wonder if they might throw it a little and come back to the run. Anything, because you're right, he's pretty much been completely neutralized. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Seven yards there and a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and ten. Now a handoff inside. It's Jackson. And a five-yard gain as he's down inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. To throw on second down, Steve McNair. And that one not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis as we're about ready to rock and roll for the fourth and final quarter. field goal attempt certainly in range but they'll look for more yardage on third down they'll try the right side here with Bo and this time he's going backwards so after the no game on the last attempt here they get it behind the line Myers kick is good and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter so he waited on the sideline for his first chance in the ball game, and it didn't come until the fourth quarter, but he connects there, a big one, to give him the lead. Boy, you talk about coming in cold. I don't care how many times you kick it into a net. You're not really ready when you go out there and all that beef is coming at you trying to block the kick. 
big spot, and he delivers. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. I tell you what, it's kind of hard to imagine. They have not scored a single point, and yet they're in this position. A touchdown drive here, and they're in the lead. Normally, when you have zero on your side of the ledger on the scoreboard, you're a little bit discouraged. But when they look over and see their opponents, they don't see a number that's way out there. They don't see a number they can't attain. In fact, they can get it right here on this drive and potentially take the lead. Now left side on the swing pass. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. Here's Jackson. Throw right side taken in by Collins. And they're going to speed things up here. Throw on first down with Jackson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to beat Oh, that's going to be a costly run. It's intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Panthers are going to take over at their own 41. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They'll start here with Jackson. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets them to second and four. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Still going inside the 20. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. A great effort there. 53 yards. And the Panthers use the big play to extend their fourth quarter lead. Well, I guess when you look back on it, it was just a matter of time until he popped a big one like that. And, you know, at halftime, you and I discussed it. They had done a nice job on him in the first half. But there were a couple of occasions where it felt like he might wiggle out of traffic and take it to the house. Finally here in the second half, that got done. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. They'll come up first and ten here. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. A short throw to Musgrave. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. Here's second down. It's now second and six. Jackson. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing. Jackson. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. The Hall of Famer Ronnie Lott picks it. He's on his way. And he will bring this one back. It's a pick six for a Panther touchdown. Well, just to add that to the list of great moments for this defense today, they've really shredded that game plan on the other side all four quarters. And, Charles, that pick six, that's, that's kind of the cherry on top. Yeah, they did it, and I feel like I'm quoting a bad movie line, but they did it together, didn't they? 
fed off of each other. Every big play they made, every tackle, every pick, everything they've done. They continually built energy in this one. And how about them culminating with a pick six? So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And he won't get this to the 20 yard line as he's down at the 19. Here's first and 10. Jackson. Throw caught by Musgrave. And he'll have this past the 30 prior to going out of bounds. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. Flag comes in. This might be a free play. This will be caught by Harold Carmichael. Well, we looked at each other right when he flinched. We knew that that flag was coming. Yeah, offsides, easy call. Mark off the five and keep it moving. Jackson to throw. Connected with Hill. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That's just his second catch of the game. They wanted to keep him silent. They have kept him silent. Defensive football 101. Don't let the best player on offense beat you. Take him out of the game. They've done a great job of doing that. Now here's a throw that's complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. He's got Thomas yet again complete. And he'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open, just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space, and it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. This is first and ten. Now Jackson. There again is Thomas and going to the line. And he takes this one into the end zone, and all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. So the touchdown was big, this almost equally big, as he'll try to get it to a one-score game with a two-point conversion. Here's Jackson. And that one is caught. So they convert here and don't look now, but this one's back to a one-score game. And now we've got a one-score game at at least a little light at the end of the tunnel. Is that what we call a glimmer of hope? Glimmer of hope. Because they've got to get an onside kick and then find their way into the end zone before time expires. Glimmer or what's less than a glimmer? I don't know. You're, you're the one that knows all the big words. <laughs> uh, a, a sparkle? A sparkle. Yeah, there we go. That's what we're going with. Touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. And he'll conserve whatever time he can as they'll opt to bring it out to the 25-yard line. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. 
And it's still two timeouts defensively, but even if they choose to use those, three kneel downs should be enough to get out of here with a victory. And that's exactly what's being stated into the head coach's headset. Oftentimes, they have a guy upstairs who monitors this at the end of the game. A little clock management 101. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Up the middle they go with a big back, Jackson. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. The Panthers going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. They'll run. Here we go. And he will have a Panther first down. And it is celebration time on that sideline, and they've earned it. The best defensive linemen, they play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. Now it looks like he'll throw here. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Over the dime looked on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field have covered up essentially every blade of grass. That's allowed them to disrupt the play. Let's go now. Panther 60, Panther 60. timeouts remember so this is going to have to be a delay now, the offense knew it they were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted and now after the delay of game they're operating behind the stick second and 15 After the penalty, it's Henry. And he'll get it down here to the 43. So this one is over. A victory for Carolina. And I think the game balls need to be distributed on the defensive side of the football. And I bet that you would agree. Yeah, if you hold a team under 10 points, that's a... Only like one game ball. You you're like you're handing game out ball? you're handing out multiple. Although I set you up by saying game balls plural, yeah, but yeah, I but, but I, I like where we're going with this. Though. You say one to I, represent yeah. like the best player of all yeah. of that, and I say multiples so that you keep everyone motivated and involved. You're a man of the people. It's been a presentation of Madden Ultimate Team on EA Sports. For Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. 
Here's the punter now, Pat McAfee, to get this one started. And here we go. We're underway in Madden Ultimate Team. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. At their own 24 yard line. Scrimmage the 37 on first and 10. Throw left side complete. That's Rice. And a five yard gain gets him to the 42. So the first catch for Jerry Rice, always fun to talk about. His career stats, Charles, they're so good. He leads in so many categories that we can't even get to them all. Yeah, what do they say? He combines ridiculous statistical supremacy with crazy longevity. How about this? Most receptions, yards, touchdowns, just to name a few of the accolades along the way. Now a deep down second down, but he wound up incomplete. You get a sense of what this game plan might be. They think they can take a few home run shots against this defense. They try to go in the opening drive, but that falls incomplete. And he will not be able to hang on to the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. Not a great start dropping his first target, but let's face it, it won't be his last chance because he'll get opportunities to make up for that one throughout this game. Fourth down, Prescott. A hit as he throws, and this is going to be incomplete. A surprising move here on the opening drive of the game. And this defense delivers a turnover on downs on the very first drive of the afternoon. Now McNair off the play fake. Open man complete downfield to Davis. Touchdown, Carolina. Vernon Davis, 42 yards. And the Panthers get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Extra point up and through by Myers. And that makes the score 7-0. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. And he'll elect not to run with it. And a fair catch on the kickoff will move the ball to the 25. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. Charles, we know that this offense is aggressive. We saw that last drive. They went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. Then they give up the touchdown. So now you feel like they really need to respond here. They certainly do, but let's face it. Sometimes when you take that risk, you understand if you fail, a little more onus goes back on your ball club to try to pick themselves back up. Prescott now on second down. Over the middle. It's incomplete. He's only hit on two of his first six passes. Time for a quick quarterback regroup here with a big third down coming up. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Looking to throw. Prescott. And he is caught. And he will have the Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Prescott yet again. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on to the contact. Brings up second down. First thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? Throwing again, Prescott on second and ten. And that one gonna come up short. Low throw. 
Pretty close to a first down, stopped at the Panthers' 22. A game of three, last play this time, they die and pick up six. Quick burst there, and he nicely bit off. A pretty decent game. Ninth play coming up here on this drive. This is third and a yard. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And that will go nowhere from the start, as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. And a loss of three to bring up four. So now the Titans are going to call upon their field goal unit here. And the 10-year bet knocks it through the goal post. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one-possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17 yard line. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. From the 25, here's second and two. Play action. It's McNair. Open man down field is Davis. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That goes to the game. Play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Here's a quick throw caught by Smith. And he gets this inside the 45-yard line. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people have to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. They had their backs up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple of more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. Now McNair. Pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Part of what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Now McNair. Flush to his right. A poor decision. 
decision there, and it's going to be intercepted. And the Titans are going to have the football here at their own 35-yard line. I think that interception happened for two reasons. Quarterback gets outside the pocket and panics a little bit, and receiver doesn't make sure he's absolutely in an open spot. So there's a guy lurking, took the ball from yeah, him. Yeah, so don't wave your arms, right, as a receiver if you're not wide open? Got to know that you're open. Otherwise, just don't do it. Following the interception, here's Prescott. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. Loose inside the 30. Inside the 10. And they will finally get to him, but a great return has set him up. First and goal at the 5. Suddenly, it's first and goal after the interception. A quick change in the situation here. They run on first down with Jackson. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. They'll run again with Jackson. And he takes it into the end zone for the Panthers touchdown. A five-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Myers connects on the PAT, and that pushes the lead up to 11. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back. But make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. And that's good for a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll leave him with a second and just a few inches left. Here's Prescott. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll be incomplete. Making tough throws, but that was a real difficult one right there. Out of the pocket, trying to be double coverage. More times than not, that's going to end up as an incomplete pass, if not worse. That's laid out deep for Rice. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Ronnie Lott, the Hall of Famer, with a pick. And the Panthers are going to take over a couple... With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all.
set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And off we go in Madden Ultimate Team. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. a smart move to throw it away. Now a second and ten. McNair. And that is caught. It's Davis. And they get it all the way up about five yards shot of midfield. A gain of 28 yards there and give him a first down. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And he'll take it across the 50 and into Chief territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Seven yard pickup. Brings up second and three. A first carry for the legend, it's Bo Jackson. Seven yards there and a first down. Decided to hit it off that time on the one pass option. Appeared to be an easy decision, just gave it inside. Nice steady game. Now McNair looking for a first down throw. And he's taken down, a chief sack. That's George Karloftis who fought his way through the line to bury him. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. McNair to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. The pressure really ratcheting up. They get the sack on first down. Then a near sack, they got to him there just as it was leaving his hand. Yeah, they might need to change their pass protection scheme a little bit. Maybe bring another guy into the backfield to help protect the quarterback. Now this is intercepted. He was trying to get it to Davis. Picked off by Fred Warner. Well, short of them returning it for a pick six, that was about the worst start you could ask for in this one because your advantage of getting the ball first is gone and they're set up a short distance from your end zone. Now you're counting on your defense to prevent a touchdown and your offense, you better be ready to come out swinging on the next series. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now a quick throw into the hands of Jefferson. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. If you're these receivers, you got to be ready because when he's going to throw it quick on that RPO, he's going to throw it quick. And this is why you spend time with your guy either in the offseason, during the week, the whole bundle. Because sometimes just telepathy. You both see the same thing, and he knows get the ball to him right away. First carry for the Hall of Famer, Emmett Smith. And he is met at the lattice rimage, and he goes down right there. And they come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try to run for it with Emmett. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. That'll go as a pickup of eight. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Here's Jackson to throw. Eluding the pressure right. A wild throw there, and it is intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. And the Panthers are going to get it back here just shy of the 20. 
This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. Remember last time out, they threw the interception on their first drive. Good news, their defense backed them up, so it's still 0-0 here as they begin their second possession. Yeah, and what great way to judge a defense. How do they handle what we call sudden change when all of a sudden, you know, it goes against their offense and have to run out in the field and try to put out the fire? Give this one great kudos for getting out there and not letting that interception lead to points. Excellent job by them defensively. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. Well, so far on this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure, or do they play coverage on this down? Here's McNair. It's caught by Davis. Uh, he is out of bounds right around the 34. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. We often hear the phrase sure-handed tight ends, and he certainly fits into that category. Plus, he's got a quarterback who knows to look his way when they need a big pickup. And on this play, he finds it for the first down. Second quarter now from Charlotte, and it's the Panthers with the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Come on, come on. On the give, here comes Jackson, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. Now McNair off the play fake. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. But there's an incompletion, partner, and the struggles through the air continue because so far their lack of passing production has led to a lack of points. Right side caught by Jackson. And brought down, but not before reaching the foul. The Panthers have the first. It's a good There's no when you see third. Tell each other, don't the sticks, don't let them get to the first down line. Anything underneath will make the play. But you have to take care of all responsibilities and know that they swing it out to a back. One on one tackles in the open field are critical. And if you miss, sometimes you end up on the wrong side of that first down game. Touchdown, Panthers! A great play there! 55 yards! Panthers post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. After a fairly uneventful first quarter, that last play, that'll make a few highlight clips. It certainly will, and you're exactly right. The first quarter almost felt like a feeling out process, didn't it? Both teams, okay, what are we going to do? Looks like they ramped things up just a little bit to start the second quarter. Extra point up and through by Myers, and it's now a 7-0 game. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Chiefs offense about set to begin this drive. Things a lot different than the last time they were on the field. Remember, they threw the interception, gave up the touchdown, and now trailing 7 to nothing and looking for a response. Throwing up first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. His favorite target, Travis Kelsey, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. Jackson. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. And he will bring this one back. It's a pick six for Panther.
All right, your challenge awaits. Can you fulfill that solo challenge? Time to find out. It is indeed the solo challenge, and it's Madden Ultimate Team time. Vegas. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be brought down shy of the 20, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone, not a good one. Three yards to pick up the first. On 
third down. Here's Bo. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 13 yards, first down, Panthers. Third and short, so didn't need much, but got a little extra on the backside. Nice run. Chewed up the yardage, didn't he? To me, that was offensive line with leverage, good blocking angles, taking on a stacked defensive front. And once they chopped that little hole in the beginning, he took it and rambled. And just the third play from scrimmage, wanted to avoid the three and out and did just that. Calling a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. They just do get the playoff as he'll look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. To throw, McNair. This is Smith with a grab. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 13-yard line. 28 yards the game there on the catch and run. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Now a give, it's Jackson. 10 more there and another first down. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing lead. I thought this was the era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. They did. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Myers connects on the PAT, and that makes the score 7-0. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Start out on the ground with Emmett. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. They'll try a little trickery here on the end around. And that would cover beautifully. Their defenders stay home, and they'll stop him behind the line. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a third down coming up. Levis to throw it. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man to play. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Levis looking to move him around a bit. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And the seven-yard line, the catch is made. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Harold Carmichael, 51 yards. And the Steelers are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. The extra point splits the uprights, and we are tied at seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. And he'll be 
is stopped up at the 25. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And that last touchdown drive they had very balanced. How key is that balance? It's huge because most of the time when we talk about balance is run, pass, almost 50-50. But most of the times when you tell the offensive coaches, they say balance is we do what we want when we want to. <laughs> and that means that they're ahead of the defense, keeping them on their heels. Yeah, they imposed their will on that last drive. To throw on second down, Steve McNair. They'll dump this to Burrow. It's complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. His first catch, good for 14 there, and a first down. Play action, it's McNair. Open man, complete downfield to Davis. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Out of the gun, it's McNair. Bringing it in, Jackson left side. Touchdown! A great effort there. He scored on the ground and through the air. And the Panthers have taken the lead. Extra point up and through by Myers. And that makes the score 14 to 7. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. And they will wrangle it down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Well, now they'll try the end around. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Levis trying to get his guys set as quickly as possible. They'll look to throw for it on third and one. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Partner, we've got ourselves a ball game. And those guys on defense, they came to play. Slipped up on their first series, but they're definitely settling in now and letting it be known the points won't come so easy again. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Boy, a curious decision to go for it doesn't pan out, and the Panthers are going to get it back in excellent field position. They run with Jackson out of the gun. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Now McNair. Give him ten that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Inside, it's Jackson. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. On the end around, here comes Smith. And he will take it across for a Panthers touchdown. Steve Smith. In the final seconds of the first half. And the Panthers will extend their lead here just before halftime. 
Myers connects on the PAT, and it's now 21-7. So just eight kicks remaining here in the first half as they'll kick this one away. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And with five seconds to go, this will likely be our final play. He's going to float this one deep right side into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked up by the Hall of Famer, Ronnie Lott. And he will be brought down on what will be the final play of this first half. First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back. Halftime over. We are ready for quarter number Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. The Steelers going to get the football first here, trailing on the scoreboard as we are back underway on EA Sports. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy. First and ten, here's Levis. That is caught by Carmichael. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. So from Panther territory now, it's first and ten at the 45-yard line. Here's Levis. They'll find his running back. It's Emmett Smith. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Levis now on second down. Going for the deep ball. And the defense has it covered. It's intercepted. The Hall of Famer, Ronnie Lott, picks it. As they started that drive, I think they looked at the scoreboard and said, this is a manageable deficit, guys. But let's go ahead and start cutting it down right here. Instead, an interception happened. So a two-possession game might become three. So as we get going here in the second half, this could rapidly reach the point where there isn't enough time left for a comeback if their defense doesn't bail them out. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. They take over here following the interception. That's the good news. The tough spot is the spot that they're in. That's inside the five in the shadow of their own goal post here, first and ten. Much more room to operate under after the big play. Here's first and ten. Up the middle they go with a big back, Jackson. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. 46 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Here's second and three. They run again with Jackson. And he'll get about three here up to the 44-yard line. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Eight yards there on a first down. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and power forward to get the first down. And a crossover out of bounds right at the 25.
With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. Now McNair looking for a first down throw. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. So an early wake-up call there leads to a quick second and long. They'll run here with Bo. And he'll be taken down at the 18. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. McNair to throw. That's complete to Bo Jackson. Stiff armed him. And he's going to get this one across the 30 yard line. 14 yards, good for a Panther first down. It's Jair Brown who's got it. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Not something you see very often from a quarterback of his caliber, an opening drive interception. Oh, there's no doubt in my mind that even he's surprised at how that one played out. But we know this guy is not going to stop him from continuing to fire as this game goes along. Probably give a little nod of respect across the field for that one and let him know he'll be back the very next series. After the interception, here's Jackson. Can't get away, and he's taking it. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Here's Jackson. And throws it on the move, but can't connect as he falls incomplete. the first fourth down conversion plays you usually think one two three yards maybe ten not there what a huge pickup as the sticks make a drastic shift forward now a throw here hold in and they've got it inside the ten at the eight this game not quite as good as the last but still over 40 yards between the two how about the way they're moving the ball down the field they had a big play a moment ago followed it up with another nice one here and before you know it they're already looking at first and goal first and goal a chance to convert that early turnover into points and he'll get into the end zone touchdown minnesota an eight yard touchdown run and the vikings take the early turnover and convert it into an opening touchdown Point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 7 0 game. Seven. 
Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And he will make it back to the 15, and that's it. Good coverage there by the kick team. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. Now remember the last time out, they threw the interception. That led to the touchdown, so now time to regroup. It certainly is, and their goal right now is to go back out on the field. A calming drive, something that takes the ball, keeps it for a while, lets the defense relax a little bit, lets the offense regain confidence in their game plan. Here's McNair. down it's McNair it's complete he dials up Davis once more and he'll be on just a yard or two shy of the 30 28 yards the game there on the catch and run you don't always expect tight ends to be big in terms of run after the catch but after that play he joins a growing band of players that's putting that stereotype right on its ear second quarter now from Charlotte and it's the Panthers with the football as they've got it with a first and ten. On the run, it's Bo Jackson. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, gotta like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely, pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. McNair. He'll hit Jackson complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up the first and goal. They'll try the right side here with Bo. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. A nine-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers are an extra point away from evening this one up. Extra point up and through by Myers. And we are tied at seven. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And he'll be out of bounds across the 25. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Again, it's Jackson as he'll stay on the ground. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. And now Jackson will look to throw it. Flush to his right. Throw down. Field going to be taken in by Jackson. And head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark it down at the 9. How about a 39-yard pickup? They'll take it. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They'll run now with Bo Jackson. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. 
Jackson. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over in that time, but it's going to lead to four more. Well, they've had success getting the ball to him out of the backfield, but this time, they had a man right on him. He was able to break that play up before he could get started. And he's going to go down. Sack thing at the 13 yard line. Sack there by Bruce Smith. And the 10 year bet knocks it through the goalpost. And they take the lead here now. 10 to 7. Well, in a close game like this, obviously you want the touchdown, but certainly they will take the three. And they'll be okay with that, but let's throw a little credit to the defense as well. And I'm just glad this doesn't come down to a debate, right? Which side won, partner? Because the defense, hey, we didn't give up a touchdown. The offense, hey, we put three on the board. Either way you look at it, I think both sides gained something out of that drive. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And with him trailing, there is still enough time to try to string a few plays together, maybe get into field goal range. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Jackson. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. I have a few questions about that throw because to me, there just wasn't a lot there. I thought he tried to do a little bit too much, almost tried to will a receiver open when there was no chance he was going to be. Nice job by the linebacker being all over that one and knocking it away. But he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. And the now 40-year-old veteran able to put this one through. Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down, two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL on EA Sports. And we welcome you back live now inside the booth alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, set and ready to rock for the third quarter. And they'll let that one go as it skips through the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Well, Charles, we saw a pretty entertaining first half, close ball game. Remember there toward the end of the second quarter, the opposition scored to take the lead. Now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. They run on first down with Jackson. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. The tackle for loss goes to Bruce Smith. 
Carry over from the first half. That defensive line continues to control the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they're actually playing the game in the offense's backfield. They're taking those offensive linemen and pushing them back towards the quarterback and towards the run. Jackson hit, and he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And they are going to set up shot at the 40-yard line. To the opposite of what they envisioned when they left that locker room, a turnover on the opening drive of this third quarter. I like your identification there, because that's exactly what they discussed in the locker room before they came out on the field. Let's get the ball. Let's go down and score. Put some points on the board and feel good about it. Not an insurmountable lead, but definitely not how they saw it at halftime. Justin Matabike there to bring him down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. To throw on second down, Steve McNair. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Here now, third and a yard. And the Panthers are going to have a first and goal coming up as they find a way to convert the end of the Jackson is in. Touchdown, Carolina. Sometimes it looks like you get too cute down the road, but there's nothing fancy about this one. As Coach Lombardi would say, we get a seal here. And we get a seal here. And we run this play in the alley. And that's good work they go hard and finish in the end zone. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Last time out, they had the fumble. That led to the touchdown. Not a great look on either side of the ball as the defense gave up the points too, Charles. But they've got to take care of the football and do better here on this possession. It's certainly been a tough stretch partner for both of those units, and they kind of put their defensive mates in a really tough spot there by dropping the ball on the ground. But an easy way to make it up to them, get out there now and get some points on this drive. From the gun, Jackson. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And out across midfield, down to the 45. A gain there of 30 big ones. So the big play moves him all the way across midfield. It's first and 10 from the 45. Able to fight through one tackle. He's got it to the 43 here. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Now it's Jackson. Oh, that's into double coverage and intercepted. Ronnie Lott, the Hall of Famer, with a pick. And the Panthers are going to have a short field here as they take over right at the 50. Well, that was one I kind of saw coming, Charge. A free safety just hanging back there over the middle, waiting. And he saw that ball go in the air, and he jumped on it. And I don't know why the quarterback didn't see that. That was just your standard cover three, which means the free safety in the middle of the field, the two corners, and they divide the field in thirds. But when you have a free safety... Oh, he's hit. He lost the football. Put him on the carpet. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35 going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching Madden Ultimate Team on EA Sports. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Smith. The tackle there by Patrick Peterson. 
And not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mucked that down for a win in the defense's column. Now McNair off the play fake. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Now McNair. He'll drop this down to Jackson. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 21. They'll run with a big man, Bo Jackson. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. To the right side, incomplete to Metcalf. That'll be tackled about two yards shy of the line to gain. A one-yard pickup leads to fourth down. The offense staying out. They're going to go on fourth and two. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. And the Panthers turned away on fourth down. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. Escaping the pressure right. That's caught by Jackson. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 30. Working the sideline there. Good route, good catch. First down, and he gets out of bounds. They have to like the play call because you have to run some guys down the middle of the field to draw some of the defenders away. They can't just let them guard the sideline exclusively. That's how it's going to work. Sidelines and incompletions to use the clock. Justin Jefferson, 71 yards. And the Vikings have a chance to tie things up as they trail by two here in the fourth. So they got the touchdown they needed to cut this to two, but now they've got to get back to the huddle. No celebration time. Got to figure out what they're going to do on the two-point conversion. Jackson here, he's going to look to throw. Flushed out right. On a bad time late for a poor throw. It's intercepted. Trent McDuffie with a pick. And he takes it all the way back. It's a pick two, if you will, as that play backfires in a big way. So here we go with the onside kick. They'll need a recovery and a touchdown. A field goal does them no good. And it looks like the Panthers' hands team does its job. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the Down the numbers! There he goes! And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as he'll run on first down. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. So they come up on second down and they can get another run like we just saw. Would likely put an end to this thing. They'll run again with Jackson. And he is in. Touchdown, Carolina. Taking it in from four yards out. And the Panthers get an important score there to extend their lead here in this fourth quarter. So a big play coming for the Panthers. They'll go for two. 
They'll try and run it here. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for a few years of two-point tries and see what the data tells us. Because a lot of teams want to throw the ball in this situation, this time unsuccessfully. I just wonder if maybe running the ball might be the way to go. With it moved up from the three to the two, you would think maybe a few more attempts at running. I, I think stats over time may bear out that running the ball will at least be the equal of throwing it in that situation. Here's first down. Jackson. He's going to let it fly. And this is intercepted. And that should do it. Picked by Kendall Fuller. And a great return here gets us one.
With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. Here's the punter now, Pat McAfee, to get this one started. And off we go from Uptown Charlotte. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Play action. It's McNair. Open man downfield is Davis. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the front. 39 yards, the distance cover on the catch. And the offensive side takes a hard now early there. That's easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That's a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball. One that they want to fix immediately. Bo Jackson had a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. Here's a second and three now from the 33. To throw McNair. And that is caught. It's Davis. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. From down at the 12, it's first and 10. McNair to throw. He'll buy some time right. He'll wind up getting nine after tucking it and running, so it'll leave him with second and a yard. I do think it's fair to say that they were caught off guard a little bit when he decided not to throw it on first down. But give him credit. They recovered in time to deny him the first down yardage. But it's only second and short. So now... And he will take it across the Panthers' touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And this will be good to give the Panthers a 7 to nothing lead. the touchdown. Here's Pat McAfee to kick. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. So first and 10 now from the 30. Throwing to start the drive. Sanders. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Throwing again. Sanders. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked up by the Hall of Famer, Ronnie Lott. And he returns it into enemy territory. Down the 45-yard line. Well, the timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. A good start to the drive. Here's it's caught on the left side. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the 5. Now a give, it's Jackson. 
And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. But a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. Touchdown! DK Metcalf from three yards out. And the Panthers lead this now 13-0 here in the opening quarter of the ball game. Extra point up and through by Myers. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. And bulldozing his way through. And he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So, decent-sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words early on. So, they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit and it forced an incompletion. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it will end up incomplete. And he's missed now in his first four passing attempts. The rhythm is just not there to begin this ball game. Here's Sanders on third down. It's complete. He's got Gronk. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach, not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. Now, meanwhile, they go for it on fourth down, and my goodness, incomplete. So certainly an interesting call there to go for it. And the Panthers are going to get it back in excellent field position. Now McNair looking for a first down throw. Eluding the pressure right. Got a man that's caught at the six-yard line. A big play. All right, you saw the challenge on the screen. I don't need to repeat it. It's solo challenge. Madden Ultimate Team, go earn your key. It's through the back of the end zone for a touchback. On first down, it's McNair. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. 
multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. A situation they'll certainly want to avoid going forward. An early second and long they're facing. Out of the gun, it's McNair. Bringing it in, Jackson left side. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. But a tough spot here on their opening drive. This is third and seven. From the gun, here's McNair. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got it. Now the ball comes loose. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. And the defense not able to get it. From, from a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? It is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you've probably talked about this training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. <laughs> it's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. Here's McNair. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Now McNair. And he lost the football. And the Packers pick it up. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. And without a doubt, not the way they pictured that opening drive unfolding. No, they were making progress. They weren't exactly in high gear, but they, they were making a few yards along the way. And now that they've comped it up, you got to go back to the sidelines and regroup a little bit. Rodgers will break the huddle and bring the pack up first and 10 at their own 44. Here's McFadden as they begin on the ground. And he'll get across midfield and into Carolina territory. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Now Rodgers. Carlos side is complete on the diving effort. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. going to throw. A throw left side complete to Harold Carmichael. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Really been an ideal start for them. They get the turnover on the opening possession. Now here they are moving the ball straight down the field on their first drive. And that feels good, but you know on their side of the field, all they're thinking is, finish this drive off because they took it away, right? So now you got them back on their heels a little bit. Now go down, put a touchdown out on them. Look out, you've won the mental battle early in the game, and that may carry over for you. And here, you're down in the red zone. You need to be smart, not force anything. So that's a wise decision to just get rid of the football. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. And again, it's Rodgers. He's got his target. That's complete. And the Packers are going to have first and goal coming up as they're able to convert there on third and two. Well, only their first drive, Charles, but they talked to us about needing to convert on third down in particular, not letting third and short opportunities slip through their fingers. Well, they were successful right there. It also tells you that they're successful on first and second down as well to get the third and manageable and make them able to pick up those first downs. Now here we are, first and goal. They've got to like what they're doing on this drive. We're scoreless after one. The Packers with the football here to begin the second quarter. As they come up now, second and goal.
They try again with McFadden. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. Call it no gain that time, and now it's third and goal. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Rodgers now to throw. This is caught. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. That pattern and scheme was well defensed on third down. He tried to just sprint from one side of the field to the other, and they got it to him quickly. But no chance at yards after the catch there, and they stopped him short. The offense is staying out there. Here we go on fourth and goal from the one. Running for it. Here's McFadden. And I'm not sure he got there. Did they stop him? They did. Darren McFadden cannot get in. And the Panthers defense able to deliver the goal line stand. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. And a fumble last time. Ball security. Talk about it all the time in the National Football League. They've got to be better at it on this drive. Don't you think that when every team gets together for the first time, I don't care if it's OTAs, mini camps, first and first damn camp in the regular season, ball security comes up about, what, the second sentence of the coach's yeah. address? And there's a, so many drills focus on that. All the time, and they do drills to make it even tougher to simulate game situations. Doesn't always work out, though. They'll throw again from their own end zone. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Jackson. And they'll get him down up past the 15. They were looking for a cushion from that end zone. He gave it to him. 15 big yards. So that last play gives him a little more space now. Here's first and 10 at the 16-yard line. Now McNair off the play fake. Open man complete downfield to Davis. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. second down when you see those rpos run you need the first man to attack and be a disruptor and on that play he closed down fast and helped knock it away on second down mcnair and steve smith pulls it in and he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45 Two minutes on the clock in what's been a scoreless first half. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 45-yard line. Inside handoff, Henry. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Now McNair. Well, that'll be incomplete, but he took a shot as he let that go. And it's going to bring up a third down. It's always tough trying to keep your guy upright when he's trying to throw the football. When you're dealing with those big, bad guys on the defensive front, it's even tougher. And this time, those guys on the opposite side won the battle, getting to the quarterback and knocking him into an incompletion. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. Like what I've seen so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. On fourth down, McNair. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. And the Panthers turned away on fourth down. And the Packers' D comes up with a big stop. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. To throw, it's Rodgers. Steps away to his left, and he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. The clock rolls as the Packers look to hurry things up. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. Now into a sea of defenders have intercepted. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. You can easily see the logic. It's a tie game. They just wanted to press it a little bit right before the half, hoping to get one more score. Now, easy to second-guess the result, but now you have to think after that interception, just a field goal, and they're behind at the break. Yeah, I think at the half, 
the head coach just says, look, that's on me. I wanted to press it, but it's because I believe in you guys. Open man downfield is Davis. Touchdown, Panthers. Vernon Davis, 33 yards. And the Panthers post the first points of the ball game as they take the lead here in this second quarter. Myers connects on the PAT, and that makes the score 7-0. Now after the touchdown, here's Pat McAfee to kick. Fair catch going to be taken, and this will be moved out to the 25. About set to get this drive started. The Green Bay offense at the line. With this slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half, we'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He has his complete to Christian Watson. The Packers going to use one of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now Rodgers. Complete Jefferson the target. Now the Packers going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 26 seconds to go until halftime. Second and five. Throwing is Rodgers. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Into the red zone, it's Rodgers. This one brought in by Jefferson. Now the Packers going to burn their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Second down and three. Rodgers again now. And oh, it'll be intercepted. It's Jair Brown who's got it. And the Panthers are going to have it here as they'll start at their own seven. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. And they'll begin inside their own 10, so field position certainly not in their favor here. Catch is made by Metcalf. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. The final shot before break, McNair. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. That's it for the first half. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. For the fair catch taken short of the goal line. And they'll begin this third quarter at their own 25. Rodgers will bring the pack up with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Here's Rodgers. And that one drops down, incomplete. Good coverage there, forced the ball free, and it's second down. Now it's Rodgers. And he comes back with one complete. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers' 40. Give them 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. First and ten. Here's Rodgers. That is caught by Carmichael. And down to the 
20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. Again, they'll throw with Rodgers. Over the middle, it's complete. And they'll work this down to the 15 for a pickup of four. Second and six. Throwing now is Rodgers. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. It'll be a gain of five. And it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll run it. Here's McFadden. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figured out how to create space for the running game to get operated. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah. And he'll take this one in for a Packer touchdown. Darren McFadden, a five-yard touchdown run. And the Packers are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Extra point right down the middle. And we are tied at seven. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Panthers out there and ready to begin their next drive. Their halftime lead now evaporated. We're back to level following that touchdown a moment ago. And that shouldn't change the mindset a whole lot from an offensive perspective because they already knew this was going to be a hard-fought game. Now they just need to go out and execute their game plan and keep moving. Now a handoff inside. It's Jackson. And strong running there as he's across midfield and down to the 49. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. McNair. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As soon as he leaked out and began his route, someone on the defensive side broke with him and arrived just in time to separate him from another reception. They run with Jackson out of the gun. And down to the 44, five yards that time. Getting had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole that closed there quickly at the end. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Was that the incorrect read or just more an error on the throw by the quarterback? I lean more towards the latter because it seemed like he was open there, just missed him on the throw. And a tough one to miss, because now you're dealing with a fourth down. On fourth down, McNair. That is caught. Oh, he's going to have the first down and then more. Touchdown. D.K. Metcalf, 44 yards. And the Panthers, on the final play of the third quarter, have taken the lead. So this game tied at the half, but we are tied no more. A touchdown there on the opening sequence of this third quarter. And what a great drive put together by their offensive coordinator. He had a plan, and they executed it almost to perfection, coming right out of the locker room. Now they're feeling good about their chances here in the second half. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. You are watching Madden Ultimate Team on EA Sports. Here's the punter McAfee to kick it away. But no run back here. Fair catch, and this will come out to the 25.
The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. And now after the touchdown a moment ago, they work from behind in a seven-point game in this fourth quarter. Plenty of time on the clock. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. A good pick up there, 22. A big hitter to start the drive. Has him up near midfield here for first and 10. To throw is Rodgers. This is caught. It's Christian Watson. And he is brought down, but not before reaching the 30. It's another first down as they bite up 23 more on that one. There's Rodgers to throw. To the right side, and complete to Jefferson. So the completion good for seven there. And it's second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You tackle them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays. Harder to move it. Meanwhile, Rodgers throw pulled in by Jefferson. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. One of the things you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. The Packers are going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. Jefferson going to go in motion right. On second down, here's Rodgers. That's hauled in by Musgrave for the Packer touchdown. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Packers are an extra point away from tying this game here in the final minutes. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And an important one that is, as we are all tied now early in this fourth quarter. Now this one setting up for a great finish. All tied in the fourth as the kick's away. And what a return. Great field position all the way out to the 48 there. There's so much for the worry about how they would be after losing their lead. What a big time return to seize the momentum back. This Carolina offense at the line, ready to go. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partners, a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but. Let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Plenty of time. All three timeouts still remain. Here's first and ten now. They run again with Jackson. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Well, they'll come up now. This is second and long. From the gun, here's McNair. Middle of the field to Jefferson. Brandon's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. Out of the gun, it's McNair. Look in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. Now the Packers going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with a minute six left to go in the game. Up the middle they go with a big back, Jackson. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Clock's under a minute. Still plenty of time, partner. They have all three timeouts. That means they have plenty of options in their play calling and where they target on the field. They can throw it downfield, maybe even in the middle, and use their timeouts. 
Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. On the give, here comes Jackson. And he maneuvers his way down to the three-yard line. Now they get the timeout. It leads you to wonder, will they kick it here or risk running another play and possibly not getting down in time? We'll see. And his kick here is good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. And you know, in an era of cost-cutting and maximizing your roster, this is a club that does not skimp on special teams, and in these situations, it pays dividends. And that's great vision by the organization. When the difference between winning or losing depends on who you have kicking the ball, would you rather have a street-free agent out there or a solid pro like this? Answer's pretty evident to me. Four seconds to go. This is likely it. One final try now for Rodgers. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. And a penalty accepted, and they move the ball forward. One final try for Rodgers. We've seen this before. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. And a fun, close ball game comes to an end. On that last play, Charles, they were on the wrong side of midfield. They needed something near a miracle, and they couldn't get it done. Yeah, the effort, that was good. Very good, in fact. They were just a little too far out to get a decent look at the end zone for that last opportunity. Couldn't get it done, but a nice game overall.